Welcome back. Today, I thought we would discuss salt and pepper shakers. Um, how to deal with them when you buy them, uh, how to prep them for sale, and why they should be an interesting sale commodity to all of you out there. So, we will get started when we come back. Now, as those of you who saw yesterday's video know, I forgot and had to add my little Portuguese friends at the end of the video. So, we're not going to do that this time. We are going to start our guys at the beginning. Okay, this is English as She is Spoke, which was written by uh, Pedro Carolino, with the unwitting assistance of Jose <clears throat> de Fonseca. And these were a couple of Portuguese gentlemen who spoke no English, but back in 1855, uh, they decided they were going to produce a book that would enable their countrymen to travel like natives in the English-speaking world. Yeah, right. Okay, this is from the section... <clears throat> excuse me, called familiar phrases. Seize upon this knave, go out, blow the fire, come out the table. One she is ugly, at least she is gracious. These children are yours? Their portrait is flatted. All trees have very deal bears. All town raise herself. Make they pens. Hold you better. All people love him. Every man is exposed to mistake himself. Hold to agree ones perfectly. One clock comes to strike. A throat's ill. You speak slowly. You break my head. You astound me. You are troublesome. Well, I have to say, about half of those were absolutely beyond my comprehension. I don't even know what they were trying to say, but my goodness, I don't think they were doing it. Well, salt and pepper shakers. Why should you be interested in them? Well, Here's a pair of salt and pepper shakers. And as you can see, very small, very light, very inexpensive. Um, I was looking at the salt and pepper shakers I have acquired recently, and I, I buy a lot of them. I buy them when I find them. Um, I thought originally that I was paying about $6 a set, and that's really not true. I did the math, and it's down around $4 a set. And I can usually sell these in my Etsy shop between $12 and $20. And I don't put a big profit margin on this. Uh, when I say $12 or $20 in that range, that's with shipping included. And, of course, I replace the corks. Now, that's one of the things I want to talk to you about. Because if you're dealing with vintage salt and pepper shakers you're very often dealing with vintage corks. And vintage corks dry out, crumble, get stuck in the salt and pepper shakers. They can really be a disaster. And if you don't know how to cope with them, um, you know, you just end up sort of carving them out with a fork and making a mess. Well, here, if you'll see, this cork is pretty well raised. This is probably the best kind of cork to have when you want to take it out of an old shaker. What you do is you grab the cork with your fingers and rock it gently. So rock back and forth, back and forth, back 
back and forth and don't do it too hard because these corks are old they're dry they're brittle and you don't want to snap the top part off because if you do that the bottom part will fall into the shaker and you don't want that so you just sort of rock it until you get it loosened and then when you get it loosened you can usually just kind of there we go ease it out now that's the easy one let's take a look at his friend okay here's his friend please note this cork is all chewed up on the top um, it's raised a little but somebody obviously tried to take it out and didn't have a great deal of luck that's where this tool comes in and I spoke with you about this before this is something my friend Karen gave me uh, she uh, deals in dollhouse miniatures and she bought some of these she actually bought too many she didn't realize how many she had ordered and so a couple of them came my way and boy am I grateful now this is what I would ordinarily use to get the cork out however knowing that since I don't even know what this is called I don't imagine most of you have these but I imagine most of you do have sewing needles this is a curved upholstery needle the reason I'm using this as opposed to a little straight needle is notice how thick it is. This is sort of a large version of the kind of needle a doctor will use to suture up an injury. I don't even know if they do that anymore. Um, but it's a lot thicker. You won't be able to break this quite so easily. And the curve helps you to dig in and grab the cork. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and go down on an angle, about a 45 degree angle toward the bottom. All right, let me get that in there. And we're just going to drive it right into the cork. And we want to get it a good ways in there because we're going to need to use this to sort of pry up a little bit on this side. And then remember what we did when we rocked the other stopper out. Then we go over, just turn it half a turn, and then over here a little more. This is time consuming. Take your time. It's worth it to get that cork out in one piece without having it fall back into the middle of our shaker. But I don't want to grab a shaker here. Yeah, I want to find something this will fit into. Okay, another shaker. Here's our cork. I'm just going to shove this in. All right. There we go. Very tight fit, as you can see. I've got a cork in my shaker now. Now you have to know I wouldn't have done that if I didn't think it was relatively easy to get these out. Our little pokey tool here. We go in and we stab our cork. And I mean, just boy, dig it right in there. And skewer that thing. Now we are not going to try to get this old cork out in one piece. For one thing, it's not a good idea to reuse the old corks because as I said, they uh, they will crumble, they will disintegrate. If they get wet, they'll swell. Um, even though most of the cork problems you'll see are because the cork has dried out, you don't want your cork wet and swelling. So we're just going to fish this little bugger until we get it out. So Oh, and by the way, I've, I've spent like 20 minutes fishing corks out of salt and pepper shakers. Um, I'm not concerned if I break it. I am not concerned if it comes out in a dozen little pieces. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to get this out any way I can. Um, 
So while we're doing this, we'll talk about the whys. Why do I care about getting the corks out? Why don't I just leave that to the buyer like a lot of people do? Um, well, the way I figure it, if you buy something from me, I want you to be able to take it out of the box and use it for the purpose for which it was intended without a lot of fuss and muss. Uh, I don't think that if somebody gives me money for something, then, you know, I ought to send them off on a wild goose chase looking for corks. Because corks are not easy to find, and when you do find them, uh, they are either very expensive to buy one or two at a time, or you have to get them like this. I get mine in packages of 100. And that's because I, I sell a lot of salt and pepper shakers. Uh, am I going to use all 100 of every size I bought? I don't know. I mean, if I do this long enough, maybe I will. But when I buy them in lots of 100, I'm getting them for about seven cents a piece. If I have to buy them in onesies, twosies, and sometimes I do, especially when I have really odd sizes, especially the larger sizes, if I have to get them, there we go, in onesie twosies, I might have to pay 50 cents or more for a single cork. So it makes sense for me, because I do a lot of salt and pepper shakers, to get them in large quantities. Does that make any sense for my buyer? No, of course not. So, when they get their salt and pepper shaker, I want to make sure they are able to use it right away. Now, these were the salt and pepper shakers that I was just dealing with. And here are the new corks. Now, this is what the corks look like. One end is wider than the other. Now, when you're trying to figure out what kind of cork will fit your salt and pepper shaker, you hold the cork by the small end, take the large end, and try to shove it in the hole. And if it's not going to go in, bingo, that's a good size. Because if it does go in, it's just going to get stuck in there. Now, this set actually uses corks of the same size. Now, I happened to grab six sets of salt and pepper shakers, just pulled them right off my kitchen table at random. Of those six sets, three use different sized corks. So, let me show you that. These, I showed you these little pelicans before. Um, now take a look at those holes. I don't know if you can see, but those holes are seriously different sizes. It might be a little more obvious if you see the corks that I'm using. Right. One cork and the other cork. They are two different sized corks. This is a double zero and this is a one. Here is our little double zero, and here is our one. Not the same size at all. And that's not the only one. Um, do you remember our pretty little Art Deco Lusterware Clowns? Same thing. Two different sized corks. And, ooh, I almost dropped that one. Hard to tell when you look at them. This one is a little larger than this one. And uh, there we go. Hard to tell. But if you try to fit the corks in, this cork goes to this shaker. Now, remember the trick of holding it on the small end and taking the large end? If I do that, I can pop that. Can I pop that little bugger in? Yeah. Okay. So, there we are. 
and here's the other one. This cork is too big for this shaker. If I took this cork and put it in this shaker, it would go right into the middle and I'd be fishing it out with my little pokey tool. Um, and that's half the shakers I have here. Um, when I had been thinking about it, I was thinking how many of them, I thought, oh, well, it's at least a third. No, looks like it's about half different sized corks. And you can get corks in different sizes. Uh, I believe these are twos. No, these are ones and these are twos. And they go upward. The higher the number, the fatter the cork. So, let's go back to these. These are the ones that we pulled the corks out of. And now I just shove new corks in them, but I'm taking those out. Because what happens next? Well, when you're taking the corks out, let's start with do it over the kitchen sink. I have at least twice in the very recent past popped a cork out at the kitchen table because that's where I was working and just covered myself in pepper because I didn't realize that somebody had filled the shakers and there was still stuff in them. So, you can have a very unpleasant 20 minutes sniffing pepper out of your nose. Do it over the kitchen sink. Once you have the corks out, and you have to make sure you have the corks out first. All you have to do with something like this is soak it in soapy water, and then just wipe them dry. This has gilding on the top, and the gilding seems to be pretty worn. It's, uh, it's, not, it's not perfect gilding on the top. There's a lot of wear on that. What you do with the gilding is you just take a soft cloth and buff it up. Don't do anything else with it. Don't use a polish on it. Just a soft cloth, buff it up, get it to sparkle. And as for anything else, warm soapy water. Just let it soak for a bit, wash it off, and voila, they're clean. Let them dry out completely and then you can either replace your corks in the shaker. I do that sometimes. Other times I'll just put them in a little glassine bag in with the salt and pepper shakers. Um, and usually when I sell them, I let the customer know the corks are new and if they want, they can shave them off. And by the way, that is the easiest thing in the world to do. If your corks sit too high, um, this one has a very deeply indented bottom, so it's not really a problem. But let's take a look at our little pelicans again. As you can see, this the bottom is not really indented much. Now in this case, I can just tap those corks in a little more. What if I couldn't? I could take this cork and with a sharp wallpaper knife, I keep those things around, not because I hope to hijack airplanes, but because I just find them to be remarkably useful little knives, and they're cheap, and they're disposable. You just shave the edge right off. If you have a sharp wallpaper knife, and you do it in a sawing motion, you can get a beautifully clean cut. And you can just sort of level it off if you want. That's something I ordinarily leave to the buyers. It's like, here are your corks. Do what you need to do. For some people, this elevation is more than enough for them to grab it and take out the cork. For others, it's not going to be. Um, and for others still, you know, in particular, boy, if you have long, talony fingernails, you can just pop it out with almost no cork over the edge. So that's something I consider to be individual choice. Now, your, uh, sorry about the jiggling of the camera. Uh, apparently the cat's being ignored. When you are selling salt and pepper shakers, you have a really large market to tap into. So, our pelican shakers. Well, 
these will appeal to mid-century collectors, both 50s and 60s. They will appeal to bird people. They will appeal to salt and pepper shaker people. Uh, they will appeal to people with green kitchens. You know, just a large, large market. Um, our little clown. Um, people who like the, this little Pierrot style French clown. Oh yeah. I know clowns aren't a big deal here. I think they are in France. Um, it's art deco. It's lusterware. So you have the art deco market, the lusterware market, the clown collectors, whoever they may be. And in addition to salt and pepper collectors or people who just want something cute and whimsical for the table. Uh, I could easily see somebody picking up this set as a gift and just saying, I'm going to give this to someone because they're just so sweet. So you have a large, large market to choose from. Small. Um, I don't think any of those packed weight would be anything beyond perhaps 12 ounces at most. That means first class shipping for anywhere from three to four dollars throughout the entire country. Yes, I know, they know you're here. Well, they saw you jiggle the camera. Um, he's gotta get, it's just, it's like a passion with him. He's got to be involved in this. I, I don't know what it does for him, but he really likes it and you need to know he's here. Um, they they pack beautifully. They ship beautifully. I've never had salt and pepper shakers break in transit because they're very heavy porcelain and they're small and they're usually squat. And that's the sort of thing that travels very well. They move quickly. At least they do for me. Jocelyn says that for her, she sells more figural salt and pepper shakers so rabbits and birds and and little animals or perhaps even little people but she sells a lot of them uh, also of course there are more elaborate sets there are some that come in caddies etc the overwhelming majority of these were made in japan uh, and that's just right across the board these obviously have a Noritake design. They look like they were made in Japan. Um, others, there's nothing inherently Japanese about this design. Here they are, made in Japan. The Japanese really captured the market in the mid-century on these pieces. So, they're inexpensive. Even today, you go into a store people say made in Japan and it's still resonating with them as low quality throwaway mid-century stuff ick ick wonderful buys so I would strongly suggest you consider it now that you know how to deal with it um, if you want to deal with salt and pepper shakers in any volume get the corks I get these like I say it's it's average about seven cents per cork because it's 100 corks and it's under $7 for 100 corks if you get them from Walmart. Just pick your sizes and go with it. Um, it's an opportunity. It's a business opportunity. It's an Etsy or eBay opportunity. And for the most part, you will take your investment, whatever it may be, and double it. So, in that case, it's easy money. Now, I have one little piece of business that I want to discuss before we go, and it does, in fact, have to do with the cat. And that is the giveaway from last week. Remember, that was our Lusterware bird pin that was donated by Alex Maga, who had previously won one of our giveaways. And this time, the giveaway is going to Kim C., that C is in Charlie, just the letter C. And I think it's because she made a direct appeal to the cat. She said, please pick me kitty. And so he did. Um, but yes, I said the cat was going to pick. Cat picked. So Kim C, do get in touch. 
you know, the kitty is waiting to give you your bird. Come here. Come on up and yeah, come on up. There you go. And you can see everybody and they can see you. Do you like that? All right. Now, now that I'm putting him up here, he wants to go away. Go figure. Okay. So that is our 50 cents worth of salt and pepper shaker information. I hope you can put it to use. As I say, I find them very quick, easy sales, fast turns in my shop. And that's what you need. You need fast turns. And if you get known as a salt and pepper shaker seller, people will go back to your Etsy store or your eBay listings and they'll check with you because these things are remarkably popular even now. A lot of us think of this as, you know, salt and pepper shakers is, is an old fashioned collectible. Well, it's coming back. So have a great day. Enjoy your salt and pepper shakers. Get yourself one of these little pokey tools wherever you can um, and just go to town. I will see you all tomorrow. Have a great day.